Hello students, welcome to Adi Chemistry online classes. I am Adi Chavardhan from adichemistry.com. This presentation is a quick introduction to disproportionation reactions. Here you will also learn how to use Latimer diagrams to predict a disproportionation reaction. This presentation is for class 11, IIT GE, NEET and SAT examinations. Now let us start with what is disproportionation reaction. It is a redox reaction involving simultaneous reduction and oxidation of same element from one oxidation number to two different oxidation numbers. For example, as shown on the screen, atom A in the oxidation state N is reduced to N minus X oxidation state as well as oxidized to N plus Y oxidation state simultaneously. It is a general representation of disproportionation reaction. And he is Mr. Weiss who will help you in understanding this topic by asking questions on behalf of you. His first question is, what do you mean by reduction and oxidation reactions? Now let us see what is reduction. It is a half reaction involving gaining of electrons that results in decrease in the oxidation number. This is an example for reduction half reaction. Here the oxidation number of atom A is decreased from N to N minus X when added with X number of electrons. It actually indicates increase in the negative charge or you can say a decrease in the positive value. Whereas oxidation is a half reaction involving losing of electrons that results in increase in the oxidation number. And this is an example for oxidation half reaction. Here the oxidation number of atom A is increased from N to N plus Y when Y number of electrons are removed. It actually indicates decrease in the negative charge or you can say increasing the positive value in other words. Now you can see clearly what is going on in a disproportionation reaction. Here atoms of same element are undergoing reduction as well as oxidation simultaneously from one oxidation number to two different oxidation numbers. Now let us see one example of disproportionation reaction. The hydrogen peroxide as shown on the screen undergoes disproportionation to give water and dioxygen molecules. What is happening in this reaction is the hydrogen peroxide is reduced to water. You can clearly see that in this half reaction the oxidation number of oxygen is decreasing from minus 1 to minus 2 and at the same time the hydrogen peroxide molecule is oxidized to give dioxygen molecule. In this half reaction the oxidation number is increased to zero. Now the question is why peroxide is undergoing disproportionation reaction? And one more question, do the atoms of all the elements show disproportionation reactions? One should note that an element must exhibit minimum three oxidation states in order to show a disproportionation reaction and among which one oxidation state must be relatively less stable when compared to a lower and a higher oxidation states. For example, in case of oxygen, it exhibits three oxidation numbers that is minus one in hydrogen peroxide, zero in dioxygen, minus two in water molecule. The minus one oxidation number in hydrogen peroxide is less stable when compared to 
zero as well as minus two oxidation numbers. Hence, hydrogen peroxide undergoes disproportionation reaction. One should also keep in mind that a disproportionation reaction must be thermodynamically feasible. Now the question is, how do we know that a given oxidation state is relatively less stable and the disproportionation reaction is thermodynamically feasible? This can be done by using Latimer diagrams. Let us have a brief description of a Latimer diagram. In this diagram, the oxidation states of an element are arranged in their decreasing order and the standard electrode potentials are written for successive reduction reactions. From this diagram, it is possible to pick out the less stable oxidation state that can undergo disproportionation reaction. One should note that for a less stable oxidation state, the electrode potential of reaction to its right side is always greater than the electrode potential for the left side reaction. In case of oxygen, the minus 1 oxidation state is less stable because the electrode potential written on the right side of hydrogen peroxide is greater than that of the electrode potential written on the left side. Hence, minus 1 oxidation number is relatively less stable and undergoes disproportionation to 0 and minus 2 oxidation numbers. Now, let us see one more example of disproportionation. The halogens except fluorine can undergo disproportionation in alkaline medium. One such example is when chlorine gas is passed through a cold and a dilute sodium hydroxide solution, it is disproportionated to sodium chloride and sodium hypochlorite. In this reaction, the chlorine in zero oxidation state is reduced to minus one oxidation state as in sodium chloride as well as oxidized to plus one oxidation state as in sodium hypochlorite. However, when the same chlorine gas is passed through hot and concentrated sodium hydroxide, sodium chlorate is formed instead of sodium hypochlorite. In this case, chlorine is reduced to sodium chloride and oxidized to sodium chlorate in which the oxidation number of chlorine is now plus 5. Now you can find out why chlorine can undergo disproportionation in basic medium by using following Latimer diagram. Chlorine can undergo disproportionation to chloride and hypochlorite ions since the electrode potential on the right side is greater than that of the electrode potential written for the left hand side reaction. Hence this disproportionation reaction is thermodynamically feasible. However, for the disproportionation of chlorine to chloride as well as chlorate, it is not so evident whether this particular disproportionation reaction is thermodynamically feasible or not. You may be tempted to sum up the electrode potentials for the reactions written on the left hand side up to chlorate ion to compare with the electrode potentials on the right side. But that is wrong. One cannot add EMF values like that. Instead, we should use the following equation to get the EMF value for the oxidation of chlorine to chlorate ion. It is equal to the sum of products of Ni and Ei divided by the sum of Ni where N indicates the number of electrons involved in the redox reaction whereas E indicates corresponding electrode potential. Let us now plug in the values of N and E's in the given equation. First of all, the redox reaction from chlorine to hypochlorite 
involves transfer of one electron hence n is equal to 1 and the corresponding emf is 0 0.42 volts then for the conversion of hypochlorite to chloride ion the n value is equal to 2 since two electrons are involved in this conversion and the emf value is 0 0.68 Likewise, for the conversion of chloride ion to chlorate ion, the number of electrons involved is again equal to 2 and the corresponding EMF value is 0 0.20. Thus, we will get 0 0.436 volts as the electrode potential value for the oxidation half reaction of chlorine to chlorate ion. This is less than the electrode potential for the reduction reaction from chlorine to chloride ion. Hence, the disproportionation of chlorine to chloride and chlorate ions is thermodynamically feasible. Now the time for homework question from NEET 2018 examination. Consider the change in oxidation state of bromine corresponding to different EMF values as shown in the diagram below. You know that this is the Latimer diagram of bromine just like that you have seen for chlorine. And the question is then the species undergoing disproportionation reaction is there are four options given. First option is bromine. Second option is per bromate ion. And the third one is bromate ion. The fourth one is HBRO that is containing hypobromite ion. I think this is easy for you. Write your response in the comment section below. That is all for now. Visit adhikemistry.com for more information on this topic or search for adhikemistry disproportionation on Google or by using any search engine. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. All the best.